Okay, there are a lot of nail gun choices out there, and I wanted to kind of go over the differences between nail guns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I have and the differences of them and where you might use them. Um, they, they kind of have different uses, right? So some of the bigger ones you're not going to use on smaller stuff and vice versa. So let me go ahead. I'm going to take these out and uh, I'll go ahead and we'll show you these. I'll also show you my battery powered ones as well. Okay, with all the nail guns taken out, you can see it's a huge amount. And these are the pneumatic ones. These are the battery ones. Now I don't have every kind of nail gun, right? There's a whole bunch of different kinds that I don't have because I don't do the type of work that you would use them with. So like for instance, uh, roofing nail guns, I don't own any of those. Um, floor staplers, I don't own any of those. Those are specific types for putting in hardwood flooring. Uh, they make nail guns for uh, cables now where it actually shoots like a staple essentially, but it's made for cables. So let's go ahead and start over here. Now I actually have a framing nailer, even though I don't do framing. Um, I got this from a Craigslist haul and it was basically included in the bunch and I basically play, paid next to nothing for it. So this is a full round head uh, nail gun and it shoots from two inch to three and a half. And it's a Porter cable this is pretty much the standard, this type of a nail gun for the framing industry. Um, and when you actually use these guys, it shoots out really big framing nails and they're pretty impressive. Um, but certainly if you're doing framing, you know what these are. And if you, if you don't do framing like me regularly, but you know what, I came across this, I had an opportunity to get it. So why not, right? Um, so it just sits in a cabinet and uh, in fact, I haven't even touched it since I got it. So it, this is all from the previous owner. Um, nail guns, if you don't take care of them and if you don't leave them, you know, in an enclosed space, a case or whatever, uh, they tend to get pretty nasty. So I keep mine in my drawer, as you saw, and pretty much all my pneumatic ones fit in there. And it's a nice area. It's divided and all my battery ones go in a cabinet. So it really will help them stay nice and not get a bunch of dust in them. Another note on these, if you can, if yours have little um, covers, it's to keep the dust out and also uh, drop some oil in when, when you're not uh, using them, just to keep them lubed up. It says oil daily, but if you're not using these guys, especially it's good to just drop a couple drops of oil in there. Um, I went to use um, one of my nail guns, the, the stapler, the other day, and it actually didn't work. I had to drop some oil in, and it actually came to life again. But um, So even if you do put nail or oil in them, it's good just occasionally to bring them out, fire them up, and maybe drive some, uh, you know, drive some staples or nails through them. And if they take oil, drop a couple little dabs of oil. So the, every nail gun comes with a little bit of oil if, if it needs oil. Some of the new nail guns, they don't actually need oil. As you can see here, this is all my selection of nails and pins. Um, this over here, this is all my pin section. So these are the little guys. The pins are really great for putting up small stuff like moldings, delicate pieces, or bigger pieces as long as you have glue going behind them. Um, these are my two pinners that are actually um, air powered, pneumatic. And this one, you'll notice the size difference is pretty extensive. I mean, look at that. It's pretty incredible, the difference in the size. So what I like about this one, the reason I got it is because it's so compact, it actually goes into really tight spaces. Whereas this one, can shoot longer pins, but it can't get into the tight spaces. So this actually will shoot up to one and three quarters from three eighths of an inch. Three eighths of an inch to one and three quarters. It's a pretty big range. This guy here, on the other hand, actually is smaller, but it only shoots from five eighths to one and three eighths. And these are called 23 gauge pins. 
So if you saw me use, and you saw me do that review on that new pinner that I got, that's the same kind of pin. It's this guy right here, and it shoots the same type of pins as you see there. Okay, to give you an idea of the pin size here, so this is 3 8 of an inch. Uh, it is puny. Now, I actually wanted to try something because this says uh, 5 8 inch minimum. I'm not sure if I can shoot a, a 3 8 in this guy. I'm actually going to try it. All right, let me load this up. So when you load the pinners up, you've got to make sure that your arrow is pointing down. There's an arrow on there um, just because that's where the point is. It's hard sometimes to know um, because they're so small. These things are like needles. Put it in there. Make sure it's pushed all the way in. And then that's it. You're good to go. You have to hook them up to the hose. So I've got my hose already here. Put it on just like that. Now this thing's ready to fire. Now these have a dual safety um, trigger type thing where you have to actually pull this guy and then you can depress this. So you have to um, physically get that guy out of the way in order for this to operate. So it's a nice safety mechanism. Let me go ahead and see if this will fire a 3 8 inch pin. Now, do you see this here? Obviously that wasn't a 3 8 inch pin. I took out an inch and uh, a quarter or something or inch and 3 8 pin and I didn't know for sure if this had an inch and 3 8 because when you take them out sometimes ones gets a couple get stuck in there and you can't see it so when you take out and you change your pin size it's actually a really good idea to fire a couple in a trash can just to make sure that you've emptied them out just to be sure because um, if that actually were in a cabinet or whatever that would not be good so there might be one more in there too I think we're I think we're good. Okay, so it's firing. Nice. So as you can see, the little pins. I mean, they're tiny holes, right? So even though it says five eighths um, minimum, oh, that was incredible. Thing just completely sprung out there. Okay, let's go ahead and switch this up. Now, because this has the advantage of shooting, look at how big that is, inch and three quarters pins, um, this actually can put up pretty thick stuff. Look at how nice that is. I mean, just... Well, um, if you angle these guys at all, they'll kind of shoot off course as you can see there. So if you wanna um, get real close to the edge but not go through, you just gotta make sure that you're aiming straight down and you know, be very careful. These guys have the ability to, to shoot into really small stuff without angling off, but you have to do a good job of shooting them in straight. Let me go ahead and take this guy out. The nice thing about these is that if they come off like that, all you do is you just break them off and that's below the surface. So when you bend them like that, they break below the surface. Uh, next, next one is the stapler. Now, of course, you all know what a staple looks like. I mean, these things are great for putting on like drawer bottoms. Um, and this happens to be a, what's called an, a quarter inch narrow crown stapler. And I usually use like five eighths. This is it right here. Half inch to one inch max on this. This is the general type of stapler that you would use for lots of different cabinet making stuff. But notice the difference of the hole here. That's a pretty different size, right? Significant. What's nice about these is that they hold hard, they hold firmer than a regular brad nail, and they certainly hold firmer than a pin nail, but they leave a massive um, area there. You don't you don't want to use these in any area that will be visible. In my opinion, you don't want to put these in like drawer sides. A lot of times you'll see cabinets that are nailed together uh, with these, um, especially on um, you know lesser made stuff. You'll see drawer boxes put together with these. 
from the side, but that looks pretty bad. Okay, stepping up from the um, pin nailer is the next size of uh, nail, and that is a 18 gauge brad. The 18 gauge brads are um, pretty standard issue here. That's, uh, that's it right there. And when I put this in there, you'll notice the hole's a little bit bigger than the pin, but it's not very big. So let me go ahead and fire it in. And you can see that's a nice clean hole and it's a little bit bigger than the pin. Now, another thing you'll notice is that if I get too close to the edge, this actually has, will have the tendency to split the wood. Just so you know, whenever you have bigger nails going towards the end, you can split wood. Whereas those pins aren't gonna split the wood. Okay, so this is from um, uh, 5 8 to one and a quarter inch length, okay? That's the, the length of these guys, 5 8 to one and a quarter. This one, is the same thing except it'll shoot two inches. So that's a pretty long nail. Let me go ahead and fire that in. Again, these are all the same. You're gonna use these to put in a lot of molding. That thing, fire it right in there, nothing big. All day long with pneumatic tools. And the nice thing about these things is they're so light, right? Okay, now, if you need a little bit more holding power, right? Um, you're putting in cabinets. Uh, maybe you're putting in big, like, baseboard or crown molding on the cabinet. Sometimes you want to go with a bigger nail. Or if you're putting in doors. Um, the next step up is what's called um, a 16-gauge nail. So now what you notice is that when you start with a bigger number, like 23-gauge, and you work your way down to 18 to now 16, the nails are getting bigger. So as we're getting... The number's getting smaller, the nail's getting bigger. So this one shoots an inch and one half to a maximum of two and a half inches. So if you want something that is um, less than an inch and a quarter or inch and a half, you gotta go with these type of nails, an 18 gauge. But let me go ahead and shoot. This is a two inch nail in there. And you'll notice the hole size is gonna be a little bit bigger. That is a monster, you can see right there. So obviously when you're shooting these in, you're gonna notice a couple of things. One is the hole's bigger, but two, it takes a lot more pressure to push these things through. So clearly a bigger hole. I mean, that's the first 18 gauge, inch and a quarter I shot. That was the two inch 18 gauge. Since you can change the uh, depth adjustment, you can also, um, you know, change the um, hole size. Sometimes when you sink them deeper, there's a bigger hole. 16 gauge nails like this one come in two different styles. One is angled and the other is straight. So this is a 16 gauge straight nail. And this is a 16 gauge angled nail. They are the same, but as you can see, they're angled. This is for the angled nail gun. This is for the straight one. Now, if you're putting in uh, doors or big crown, I mean, I don't use a 15 gauge nail gun for crown molding, uh, but you certainly can. Back in the day, I think I did use it uh, a few times, but mainly these are great for like putting in doors. But if you need a bigger nail, like the biggest holding power nail that you can get uh, that's interior worthy, you're not gonna be shooting a big framing nail into uh, crown molding. So if you have something pretty significant uh, like doors, the door jams get put on with a 15 gauge nail gun generally. There we go. These guys are a little bit bigger. You got to put a little bit more force when you hold them and then fire them away. The hole size, when you think about this, it's not that much bigger than the 16 gauge uh, because the way the 16 gauge is, is more um, rectangular and this is more round. So there's a little bit of a difference there. I took some pliers and separated these. Okay, so now you can see here, there's 
a little bit of difference and the overall size of the nails. It's not a, the nail head, it's not a huge difference. And this is square and this is rounded. I mean, it's not perfectly round. It's got a little bit of a flat spot to it. You can kind of see that, but it's more rounded. So these guys are definitely similarly sized, but that 15 gauge is definitely bigger. You can certainly see that. Okay. Could you use a 15 gauge instead of the 16 gauge to do um, the trim work? And the answer is normally, yes, you can. Um, I don't find that I have to use this, the 15 gauge for much anymore, but um, normally I just go 16 gauge for, for everything. Um, however, I do believe if you're doing door work where you're putting in doors, I think this is the right um, size for the job. Um, so just for extra strength. So crown molding, uh, baseboard, all that stuff, go with the 16 gauge. And I prefer the angled. So let me show you that. Okay, so these are the battery powered guns. Um, pretty much everything is the same, right? You can use the same nails that you would be using on the other. Um, there's no difference. So the same exact brad nails go in this as they do the pneumatic and the same exact pins. The only difference is that my um, my 16 gauge over there is straight, whereas this is the uh, angled. And so I showed you the angles. That's that. So if you get a gun that looks like that, see how it's angled and not straight down? Now, 15 gauge guns only come angled. They don't come straight like the, um, the 16 gauge give you that option. Um, the brads only come straight as well. So that's straight. They don't give you an option. That's why I prefer the 16 gauge for pretty much all baseboard work because you can get tied into corners, um, you know, and that's really nice to be able to do, especially when you're doing crown and stuff. Uh, that extra ability to get in and tight to the corners is really nice. So what are what's a disadvantage to a battery uh, tool? One is the the weight of it. Um, these weigh quite a bit more than the pneumatic counterparts. So if you have uh, maybe if your your arms aren't so strong or whatever, this is definitely going to you know be a little heavier. But these ones, the newer additions like these versus the old ones like I used to have. The old ones were much heavier. Um, these guys with the lithium ion batteries are much lighter. So they're still heavy, but um, you know, much lighter because of the battery and, and just the way it was made. I definitely prefer a angled 16 gauge, whether it's pneumatic or battery, that's my go-to nail gun uh, for installing jobs, molding and stuff. But um, now, the reason I liked it so much before is because I could do pretty much everything with it since it, uh, the minimum is inch and a quarter, the max is two and a half. So I can do lots of different stuff with it. But um, what's nice about this guy is because now I have a lot of confidence in this gun's ability. So at job sites, I have been putting in crown molding, baseboard, um, flutes, pilasters, whatever. Um, pretty much everything that you can imagine for a job, three quarter inch material, um, crown molding, and um, it's been working flawlessly. So I really like this tool. And so this guy will go up to uh, one and three eighths. And I used to think battery power, one and three eighths pinner, I used to think it wouldn't be enough. But you know what? The reality of it is, is that I don't need my inch and three quarter uh, pinner. Um, I really feel like this inch and three eighths is plenty long for most tasks. And you can see that nail right there. So let me fire it in and you'll just see the difference right away and you can hear the difference. <laughs> Look at that thing. I mean, how sweet is that, right? Let me put it right next to the pins from the pneumatic guns.
Yeah, that is nice, right? It is just a sweet tool to work with. And it's only 12 volt. The thing weighs next to nothing. This is my 18 volt um, pinner. This is the one that I originally had. And this is a complete disappointment. I, it's because this was so unreliable, I stopped using my pinner on the job site. Um, I pr primarily just brought this and um, the um, brad nailer for little tiny um, moldings that I needed. And then sometimes I would bring this just for like scribes. Uh, but now this guy pretty much does all of it. Crown molding, flutes, pilasters, um, like casing and um, baseboard. So that's, that's pretty much it. Now again, crown molding on a cabinet where there's glue and whatnot, not crown molding on the ceiling of a wall. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. That I would be using this guy with a two and a half inch nail. So that's another thing. When you're doing um, baseboard and crown molding, the length of material or the, um, the thickness of material is gonna determine how long you should be using, um, how long of nails you should be using. If you're going into normal crown molding into a ceiling wall, um, I like to use two and a half inch because I can angle them if there's no studs uh, in certain areas, um, cross pin them. So basically you end up doing this. And if there's no stud that you can grab, like in the ceiling sometimes, if you cross pin them, um, two and a half inch will actually go into the drywall and hold it pretty well. Um, if you know there's plenty of studs, no problem. You're, I'm still using a two and a half inch. Uh, but now if I switch to a baseboard, I don't want to use two and a half inch for a baseboard. That's way overkill and potentially a problem because sometimes if you're, you know, firing into a wall with really thin baseboard, um, two and a half inches, that would be crazy. You could go too deep. You could hit anything. Uh, there are a number of things you could hit, uh, like for instance, plumbing or electrical, whatever, if they were not put in the right spots. Looking at these holes, you kind of get an idea of, you know, the different sizes that you're going to get left with, with the different nail guns. And I hope that I've kind of helped clear up some of the, um, you know, confusion around nail guns because there's a whole bunch of different nail guns. And oftentimes it's hard to know, you know, what's what, what should I get? Should I get an 18 gauge nail gun? Should I get a 16 gauge? Should I get a 15 gauge? Should I get a 23 gauge pinner? What would I use with that little pinner? Uh, and I'm telling you, if you use a pinner, you're gonna have pretty good strength. Let me show you an example. So if I take this piece of wood right here and I wanna nail it together, let's say I wanna nail it like that, okay? And that's gonna be, what, an inch and a half? I'm gonna take my inch and three eighths pinner and I'm gonna see if I can hold that really nicely. So let me see that. Go ahead. Let's just see how strong this is. Two little pins. Let's see if I can even get this apart. Yeah, good luck with that. You're not getting that apart. The only way to break this apart would be to come from this end and pry it out like that, of course. But you'd be able to do that with a 16 gauge or a 18 gauge also. Let me show you. So now if I shoot this thing through, it's gonna go through the whole thing. See that? Now, those two nails combined with those pins, you can see the difference in the hole size. But if I grab it from down here, it's going to be pretty hard to do, but I certainly can move this. No problem, right? Because that's just nails at one end. So you kind of have to be smart about how you nail things if you're going to rely on nails to hold. Whereas I like to put glue on stuff and let it dry and then try to break it apart, right? Good luck with that. So if you're, if you're contemplating using nails and you wonder what size, you know, will it have enough holding power? Don't rely on the nail for the holding power. Use glue if you're concerned. The glue is going to hold it really well. Now, all you have to do to make sure this piece doesn't move is just put a pin at the other end. 
And look, I mean, that's gonna provide you with so much more strength. And certainly if you use a bigger nail, um, like a, you know, obviously you're never gonna be able to pull that apart. If I had my two choices for two different Brad nail guns and I wanted to get, um, you know, into the type of work that I do, I would go with a pinner just like this if I could find it. Um, the Ryobi, I guess, makes a pretty good one. So I probably, if I didn't have the ability to get this one, I would get the Ryobi 23 gauge pinner. And then since I'm getting the Ryobi, maybe I would get the Ryobi, um, not, I don't really know if they have a good one. Um, I like the DeWalt um, 16 gauge. Um, this is kind of my go-to. So I would get the 16 gauge and then maybe the pinner. Um, and then if you could maybe down the road, um, get the 18 gauge along with it. So some would say, get the 18 gauge and the 23 gauge pinner. That would be a great combination. Um, if you're using the Brad nail gun for installing face frames on cabinets, this doesn't have a lot of um, holding power downward. In other words, if you're doing it like this, where you, you put the nail on and your, you know, your cabinet's there and you're putting the face frame on, this nail right there, that's got a massive amount of holding power. It's way more than this guy. And it's, it's super simple. The size of the head makes all the difference. Let me fire this in. I mean, look at the difference in the size. Can you see that? I mean, it is a massive difference. If you want holding power for face frames, if you're doing that, um, definitely go with the uh, 16 gauge. But if you're if you just want light duty work, then I would say 18 gauge and then um, accompany it with a pin nailer if you can down the road. Um, and again, cheaper versions of this are pneumatic. So if you have a compressor already with hoses and everything, then heck, just get the pneumatic if you don't need cordless. Um, certainly if you're working on the job site, this is awesome because you don't have to worry about having a hose and a compressor. And especially if you're in people's homes, um, the compressors when they go on are annoying as heck but also the hoses pulling them around are annoying because they can um, damage stuff. They can discolor stuff if you have a dirty hose. Um, so if you're doing that a lot and you go into people's homes with a hose and a compressor, it's a good idea to have a hose that you only use in, inside. So it's never touched the ground outside. It only goes indoors and even go a step further and make sure if there's anywhere that it's touching a um, part of the house, like for instance, baseboard or whatever, if you're pulling it around room to room, um, it's, it's really, it's really tough to do that without damaging stuff. So try to limit, um, the length that you're working with those. So maybe just use a short hose and bring the compressor to you rather than dragging a hose throughout the entire house, you know, using a hundred foot hose or something. To me, that's just crazy. You're asking for trouble. Um, and if you came to work at my house and you were doing that, I would be like, no, find another way, man. Don't, don't be trashing my house with this pneumatic hose. Uh, it's the same thing goes with carpet cleaners. Have you seen what they do to your baseboards when they clean your carpets? Hopefully I've, I've answered questions that people have. Um, I've gotten quite a few questions. What would be my, um, if I could only have one nail gun, that's always the question. If I could only have one, one particular tool, which would it be? Um, and it's, it's just so hard to answer those questions because if you can only have one tool of anything and this is the type of work you wanna do, I think you better find a new kind of work to do because as you can see, it takes more than just one kind of tool to do pretty much anything, um, just like sanders, right? If I could only have one sander, which would it be? Um, and it would be the sander that I have. That's what it would be. I wanted to talk about this guy here. Um, this thing is, I don't know if they sell this anymore, um, but I want to tell you something. If you have a um, CO2 cartridge, like for the type that uh, shoot paintballs, you could get them at Walmart and they used to rent them out. I don't know if they still do or not, or you could exchange them and you would get money for them. This little guy, all you do is you connect the um, 
CO2 cartridge right there to the bottom. And now what you have is a portable air system. And you just connect this right to your nail gun, just like you would everything else. And then this clips on your belt. Let me show you. It's pretty sweet. Okay, check this out. If you have a CO2 cartridge, it's gonna hang down below, right, right there next to your pocket, whatever. And I'm hooked to my tool. Tell me this isn't pretty sweet. And all you have to do is connect the uh, CO2 cartridge. Now I've actually, believe it or not, I have actually trimmed out an entire house with this only, no compressor. And I'm telling you, these things work great. But this is designed for this one, but you definitely can put a bigger hose on it. Uh, I just always have used this guy. And these are great because they actually stretch pretty good. Talk about gadgets and gizmos. This is definitely one of those that, uh, you know, pretty sweet. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and uh, learned a little bit. I appreciate it. But certainly subscribe to the channel and come back. Thanks again. Bye.